I just got through watching the Department of Water Resources briefing on the situation at Orville Dam, and even though that picture I posted on the Union that Jake Bunting took looks alarming, there really is no cause for alarm with what's going on at Orville. First and foremost, the dam in Orville is in fine shape. Plan A is going to be to continue to pour water over the busted spillway, and Plan B, the second plan, is going to be if if they can't get enough water out that direction, they'll use, for the first time, the emergency spillway. Now, I'll show you closer here on Google Maps where everything is located. So I took a lot of notes during this briefing. I can share with you what I learned. Orville Dam here was built in 1968 and, of course, encompasses the three forks of the Feather River, North Middle and South Fork. And, of course, that watershed extends all the way up to the top of the Sierras. The current inflow into Oroville Reservoir is about, right now, about 120,000 cubic feet per second. Cubic feet per second is a measurement of, of water flow. That kind of alarming looking picture I just posted, this one here, uh, this is from about noon today, that is about 35,000 cubic feet per second being discharged out of the busted spillway. Here you can see where the spillway has failed and the water is mostly bypassing the spillway and coming down the side. This is pretty far down the spillway. What the engineers are concerned about is erosion above the break. If this here continues to erode further up the spillway, that's more of a concern. They're willing to lose this whole lower section of spillway and let it fall into the um, forebay, and I'll show you the Thermalito forebay here in a second. Uh, not, not, not a big deal, but they don't want this to erode too far back up the spillway. And uh, geologists are convinced that there's good solid bedrock up here to prevent this from being continue to erode too far up the spillway. Let's go back to the Google map and show you where everything's located. Here's the dam, here's the spillway in question, and the break is right about there. So it's pretty far away from the entire dam and uh, area where this break is. So this erosion occurring right here is of no concern to the dam at this point. Again, about 35,000 cubic feet per second is what they're flowing out of there. They're also dumping about 14,000 cubic feet per second through the power plant located, or I believe it's right down here at the base of the dam. So that gets you some more water out of there. But you're still coming up short for the 120,000 cubic feet coming in to the reservoir. The reservoir is rising at a rate of about six inches per hour. And you know, even though it stops raining down here in the valley, uh, it's continuing to rain and melt snow up in the high Sierras. So this water level is going to continue to rise. So that brings us to the emergency spillway located right here. This emergency spillway has never been used. This is a low point and is a critical design of any dam to have this in place. If the water were to rise to that point, they can't get rid of it quick enough, it's going to pour over the emergency spillway here and it'll be absolutely uncontrolled. Of course, the water here is controllable, but the water in the emergency spillway is uncontrollable. Whatever the water coming into the reservoir is going to equal the water departing the reservoir down this emergency spillway. So there's bulldozers and tractors operating down here right now, clearing the way for in the event that they got to start using this emergency spillway. Uh, so don't be concerned if you see a bunch of tractors and equipment down there. They're cleaning it up and getting it ready because if, they, if, this, if this thing starts rolling, it's going to blow all these trees and debris down into the Thermalito Diversion Pool. Here's the Thermalito Diversion Pool, and then here's the, the dam associated with that Thermalito Diversion Pool. And the water here splits into the Thermalito Forebay, and this water goes into the Feather River. So all this debris... If this thing fails, no big deal. It's just going to go into this diversion pool and make a bit of a mess. They've even gone so far as to move fish, steelhead and salmon, 
in the fish hatchery here in the uh, diversion pool and moved them all the way out here to the uh, after bay. And that's where this water diverts into, uh, it, uh, it heads out over here and into the after bay, goes into the ag lands, and then right here pours back into the Feather River. Now this spillway, again completed in 1968, has a maximum design capacity of 250,000 cubic feet per second. And the most they've ran this, the hardest they've run this spillway before, when it was in good operating condition of course, was 150,000 cubic feet per second back during the floods of 1997. So what that means is all this downstream uh, infrastructure was tested in 97 up to well over 150,000 cubic feet per second. So with the total input right now of just 120,000 cubic feet per second, the downstream infrastructure should be able to take whatever comes out of Oroville Reservoir at this time. Now nobody knows yet why this spillway failed. It looks like when this picture was taken yesterday, I believe, this sidewall is still in place. But I suspect excessive splashing down this spillway started eroding uh, the side of the hill right here outside of the wall and undermining the spillway and thus failing it. But they'll, they'll do a forensic study and figure out why that failed there. By the way, they're also uh, already storing riprap rock uh, right up here for the future repair. But they're not going to dive in there right now and mess with it. So like I said, their biggest concern is continued erosion up the spillway. Um, and they're, they're pretty certain that there's good bedrock up here to prevent this from eroding too far up. But since this damaged area is located way down here, they got quite a distance to go with the erosion uphill before it starts to become even more worrisome. It's still well far away from the Oroville Dam itself. So it's a very interesting uh, engineering emergency you're dealing with, 120,000 cubic feet coming in, approximately 50,000 cubic feet going out, the water level rising at approximately six inches, and you only got nine and a half feet to go before you get to the top. Uh, we got a five day break in the rain coming up here, but snow's gonna continue to melt uh, up in the high Sierras. So who's gonna win this race? Regardless, it's, from all indications, it looks like it looks like it'll all be fine. <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. Stay tuned. <laughs>